hopes that we back clock. Yeah, it's seven according to my my, my watch is obviously slow. Um so I propose to start. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you very much everybody for coming. Um one thing I'll say before we start the meeting, when you get we get to agenda item uh, 13, then um, all members of the public and yourself, David, yeah. we're back to 11 as well. Oh, on 11, I beg your pardon. <coughs> yeah, from 11 downwards, um, the meeting is closed to the public because we'll be discussing matters yeah. um, that are personal. Okay? Uh, thank you very much. Right, so, on we go. Um, we've had the apologies. Um, I'll remind you all to declare the conflicts and pecuniary interest on any items on the agenda, but we can do this as we go through the items, should you remember to do so. Uh, to approve the minutes from last meeting, is everyone happy with the minutes from the last meeting? No. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. 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 okay, right, now is the public forum when we have a total of about 10 minutes. Um, you're only allowed to speak members of the public commissioners um, during the forum. After that, you're not allowed to speak unless I address you for any particular information. Okay, so who would like to go first? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm James Higgins, the Community Liaison Manager at UP. Um, we're building full fiber broadband um, across the east of England um, with the aim to enable a million homes by 2025 to benefit from gigabit broadband speeds. I wanted to just uh, come and visit the meeting this evening, so before the coming year, the plan is uh, to be able to bring our service into um, Upwell. Um, so it's just to, to start an initial conversation and awareness with the parish council um, and to, to move into the area. Um, we utilise existing infrastructure, um, so to try and minimise disruption as much as possible. Um, but we're putting our own fibre cable into the infrastructure, whether that's the ducting or the telegraph poles, um, which allows us to provide our own end-to-end -end service to residents. Um, we're providing up to gigabit speeds, so for a residential property we could provide a 200 meg package for £26 a month, um, but also to be able to support businesses as well. Um, but we're also conscious that when we're, we're building in the towns and villages that we are, we don't want to just um, bring our infrastructure and service and then move on from the, the town or village. We very much want to build a long-term relationship, which is where my role uh, fits in at the company and um, if there's opportunities to support local <coughs> community groups, uh, sports teams, schools, um, parish council events, um, anything like that would be very welcome to um, discussing it and understanding more about the opportunity. Um, I'll keep the council up to date with how uh, the, the bill progresses um, in the area and let you know as and when things <coughs> move on but um, I just wanted to introduce myself and, um, and raise awareness with the council. Uh, what point is this due to start? Uh, in the forthcoming months. I don't know specifically, um, just because of the nature of the build, it depends. And um, because we're putting our own fibre in end to end, it'll just depend when we move into the area. So. But it's just that we're the forthcoming year we have to be able to bring the service uh, into the village. Okay, and as you said, no doubt the council get a notification as to where, where you're going to be and what mm -hmm. any sort of impact it has on highways and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, at Wimbledon, you mentioned. Okay. Uh, yes, yes. So the, the two hundred meg package, for example, for residential property is twenty six um, pounds pounds a month. Um, and I can send more information across uh, for the council to distribute that. Would be useful. Please, thank you. Will that mean? So you mentioned infrastructure. Will that mean obviously poles and things up the road or? Uh, how much will that would have to be done? We will try and minimise it as much as possible, and hopefully, if the the infrastructure that's in place is in good condition, then we should just be able to put our fibre into the ducting or on the telegraph poles. So it should minimise disruption with um, any cables being put on a telegraph pole, it would just be a case of a, one of our cherry pickers um, probably putting cones or maybe temporary traffic lights up just to be able to put the, the fibre up. <coughs> but there may be um, more work with civils if um, the infrastructure that's in place needs clearing out, for example, if it hasn't been touched uh, for a while. But we're We'll try and minimise it as much as possible for, for the residents. Also, oh, BT and sort of open reach, they give you permission to put use all their ducts? Yeah, so uh, it was in 2019 um, they opened up the infrastructure. This is the UK, we only had 18% of the premises that had fibre to the premises, which is what we're installing. Um, the countries like Portugal and Spain are at 99 and 98% availability. So there's a lot of uh, push into bringing fibre into the communities. and utilising the open-reach infrastructure that's in place. Thank 
put a question to you. Yes. It's a long-term project in the centre of the village mm -hmm. to remove all the very unsightly overhead wiring. Okay. Uh, now we realise it's not just um, BT with the electricity and this other stuff else, but would this be an opportunity to start to look at it? I wouldn't be able to comment on BT's infrastructure and what they, an overreach of what they would be able to do with replacing the telegraph poles, for example. Um, we only utilise the existing infrastructure, so we wouldn't necessarily come in and um, put ducts on uh, without um, knowing more about it, so I wouldn't be able to say definitively. But I can, I can feed it back and explain that there is um, you know, a long term project to, to look at this. Yeah, well,
Um, the first item is the village fee feature, and before we discuss where it's at or not at, um, Richard Melton um, was heading up this group. Um, I will step in and head up that group because I was involved with it anyway. Um, have you got anything back from Graham recently? No, so um, the planning got extended to the 25th of November, so hopefully we should hear whether we've got that through now. Um, the middle level commissioner's paperwork I've got, so we're just waiting for the planning permission basically at the moment. No, um, right, Brian. I'm oh, sorry, Brian. Will we be able to look at the drawings of what is proposed to be constructed? I think Richard. Yes, definitely. I think Richard had Richard, Richard had them, and he did. I think show to. He might have shown to whole council actually. Um, I'll contact him and get plans from him to, to show. It's Graham has has the one. The only reason being, I did mention it once before. It would be interesting to see, and it being the position it's in, right against the river, is to make sure that they're not going to come back in the future because the thing has slid, being undermined, and then asked to cancel for money to help to put it back. Yeah, I, I think as well. So that'd be nice to make sure it's done. Sure. No, correctly it's, in the first place. Yes, I'm sure. I'm, I do know that the middle level commission have been consulted on this. Um, because obviously because of where it is yeah um, so yes but yes definitely but i'll get hold of the plans from richard and i'll get them circulated the, the plans will be the ones that are on the borough council planning portal oh they will be You're yeah they'll right. be on the borough yes. council planning portal with everything i don't think it, um graham did ask the council what sort of surface what to put it down mm -hmm. but i don't I think that was only so you could put something on the plan because there's probably two or two or three options so, you know, the guy on Brian says it just depends on what option is, is chosen. I don't think there's actually a definitive whether it could be the suggestion of Yorkstone, block pages. Mm. I suggest to print the concrete as being the, you know, the least thing to maintain and combat weeds and what have you. So, I, don't, so I think Brian just wants something to put down in the planning application. But look, everything is on the, if you've gone the Borough Council Planning um, Portal, that'll be, that'll be on there. <coughs> It will be, yeah. And all the plans, all the details and everything. I've been more concerned of how they're going to anchor it in position. I think you'll find that's all in the planning information. What do you think about more pilot? Well, you know what I mean, Chris? If you don't have it anchored, see, what you'd really want is like a C-shaped ground beam. And then you want it anchored at this end, and then whatever you do on top of <coughs> it, it's not going to shift. It's not going to move. Even if it's partly undermined, if we have bad weather or high waters, long as it's formed that way and anchored this end further in the bank, then you know you won't have to worry too much about what might happen in the future. I think the, I think the existing brickwork that makes up the canal bank, which originally had dwellings on it, has been there for over. I don't know how many hundred years or whatever, and that hasn't moved or collapsed or anything. So I think by just clearing it and putting the surface on there, what we would do, I don't think there's any chance probably in the next few hundred years that it's moving. No, it's just the fact that what you're saying, you're clearing it, you're disturbing it, until you unearth it, you don't know what condition it's in under there now, you're going to put extra weight on top. Where at the moment you're getting no traffic, live traffic on it, but you, you will do once you start to use it. So it's worth considering on seeing the way it's constructed. I think we're a way off that. Yeah, um, you're probably right. So <coughs> the, the, the planning applications are going to so be put back again yet, yeah, but it certainly is on the Beacons in the West Norfolk planning site. Um, because I know it came through to the planning group and we had to declare an interest in it. Um, so yes, it is on there. I don't think we've got as far as, as You've said at the moment, but certainly it's something noted. Well, something normally they don't. You say we're going to do this. Is that okay? Mm. Oh, yeah, but it's the detail. Mm. Mm. No, I, I understand what you're saying, um, but uh, I will still ask Graham if he can, or Richard rather, if he's got a copy so we can circulate them anyway. Just say you happen to go through Kingsley and Westmorefoot. 
Okay, and um, the cemetery uh, group. Right, um, I've been in further um, email correspondence with the uh, Borough Council, with Matthew Henry, um, and a couple of others, and uh, it has moved on, but it's still a question of two steps forward, one step backwards, I'm afraid, and I sent a reminder to um, a few days ago saying that we still haven't heard, and we have yet another council meeting coming up tonight, um, and that the way things are going, we're beginning to think that the borough council don't actually want us to take out the cemetery. I've heard absolutely nothing, but in the meantime, we do know that one of the people that uh, borough councillors that um, worked in that uh, project is actually not there anymore. He's moved on, and um, actually, am I allowed to say he's there? Yeah. Um, and Harry Humphreys has now taken up the position, which I'm quite pleased about because I always found Harry to be very reasonable and good to work with and I'm sure he will make a difference for us. I've not made contact with him yet because I've just found out. So we haven't actually got much further with this folks. Um, uh, it's still with the Borough Council to come back and tell us what they're expecting us to pay at the end of the day. Um, and I suppose before too long, um, perhaps in January's meeting, if we still haven't moved forward, we actually need a group meeting to decide where we're going to go with this, because there's only so long we can hang around and, and not time. Um, apart from that, there's not really any more comment I can make on it. Can I just add, regarding the cemetery, I know it's not you know, a standard agenda, but when somebody got come and collect Dari Turco's bench from my backyard and install it, please, because I've had that now for what four months, three or four months, and the cemetery. I've asked the cemetery group when they're going to install it. Richard offered some slabs, even though he's resigned, he still said the slabs were on offer. But nobody's doing anything. What was the original agreement? Who was going to install it? Cool. Well, I was met with Irene to discuss where it's going to go, and Irene approved it. Right. Yeah. And then it's a case of... Then we had a meeting down there, um, Richard said he was going to get the slabs, mm -hmm. and then we never heard any more. But, uh, he's still going to, to donate the slabs, he's already given us what the lady's going to produce the slabs for us. Mm -hmm. So that's well, going to donate the slabs and Calvin was going to put in position, was it? I can't remember. I've said to Irene there'll be a charge it's because of the arm. two others to put down there as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, so we need to contact Richard to see when we can have the slabs. Is he providing slabs just for our turkeys? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. But we've got some slabs, so we could use the slabs we've got and then use Richard's, mm. if that makes sense. Okay, and then Kelvin is supposed to be citing the bench, is that the idea? Yeah, do you want to ask? Yeah, Kelvin. Okay. Yeah. 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 To go get the bench from Andrew, who has looked after it. Thank you very much for no, that. Just yeah. <laughs> if I go around the corner, it's there, and I think, well, where is it going to go? Oh, fair enough. Thank you. You've been sitting out all summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the next item on the action log was the solar lights at three holes on Lakes End. Um, this item will be discussed under the budget. <clears throat> Uh, the item after that is 17-19-21 School Road, tiles falling off the roof. Prue. Well, there has been an inspection of <laughs> building control again, <laughs> for about the sixth time. Uh, nothing, nothing, nothing has happened. I haven't seen anybody. Have you seen anybody when you've been by? No. Has Brown seen anybody when he's been by? No. Um, no. Nothing, nothing seems to be happening. I think because CNC have managed to contact um, yeah, the guy that owns it, the guy that owns it said he'd do something, he hasn't still done anything. So you said I think it was some more tiles that were slipping off, so I've contacted CNC again today and said this is a matter of urgency, somebody is going to be hurt shortly. Mm. But then I've said that the last three, three times, times yeah. that I've written to them. So I've sent that on again today. Um, it normally takes them two or three days to answer. Sorry, could I just so this was the one about that, wasn't it? From Ian Smith? Yes. That's the chapter needs to come down. Yes, it was, but precisely nothing has happened. That was dated on the second of November, and today is the 14th. 
Um, he, he informed him he would lose it ASAP. An action plan began to the main move. And I'll contact him later today to clarify when we're going to be able to attend and we've heard no more since the second one. So this is uh, clearly inadequate. Could I just ask you, Andrew? Um, have they put in for planning for yes. that site? Yes. Yeah. So maybe that's why they're not doing anything. Oh, but that's silly. Yeah. If they're put in to refurbish or to, or to make the dwellings at the front, which were offices and storage, back into dwellings, which is um, a good thing. And also, have, I think there's two, two, in the two three in the back in the in the in the in the, um, the courtyard. I don't think that's a reason. I don't think that is a reason good enough not to do anything to the roof. No, no. I just but wondered why that's not, that's probably why they've not rushed to do anything. They need to be taken down and taken off. Of there and Melanie said she she has contacted C and C again to see if we can get enough. So the only way you can truly see if anything has been done or if there are any slipped slates or missing slates is from the other side of the river, because you can't. Can't see you can see them from across the road, and there's a pile of slates on, on the footpath. Mm. Um, the problem is that building is right on the path, and it's, it's got no frontage for them to fall off on, has it? No, they fall off onto the pavement yeah. or onto cars if yeah. they're parked there, is mm. the only trouble. Mm. Um, apart from doing what you've actually done at the moment, I don't know what else we can do. Having some inside information because I've known him about 20 years. And they're short of seven staff in the CNC and haven't been replacing them, so I'm sorry there will be delays. Besides, there's a lot of accounts at the moment. Right, okay. Um, <coughs> playing devil's advocate, I'm going to turn around and say that's not our problem. But it will be a problem if a slate falls off and hurts somebody. Mm. Um, but, but, yeah. Or at best, damages property, car or something like that. So. It does need to be given urgent attention. I'll have a word. Thank you. Right, moving on, the next one is uh, Wyndham House Falls Bridge Overgrown Trees. Uh, so that's the answer that I got. They, um, highways have been out and had a look at it, but currently they um, don't see there's any action required, but they will keep an eye out on that one. Okay. Um, and the last item at the moment is cherry. It's just cheery there. It does, but it's a cherry tree. It's a cherry. <laughs> <laughs> cherry tree covering highways sign, Brian. No, it's so Brian. 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 Well done, Brian. 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 <laughs> Him as well. Him as well. Yes. So things going great on that one, isn't it? That was a um, So I contacted Elgoods. Elgoods, well, I contacted Middle Level, it wasn't theirs. Contacted Highways, it wasn't theirs. Same old story. So I contacted Elgoods. Elgoods said, oh, no, that's not ours. So I said, well, if it's not yours, can you remove the benches that are off the front then? Or oh, I'll send somebody down, he said. <laughs> Funny that. Anyway, it has been partially trimmed, I believe, Andrew, hasn't it? But it, it could do a with few it. It looked like it. One branch has been cut off. Yeah. I just wondered if it was something Tim could just trim the rest off. I don't well, know the branch is Looking are. at it, the actual, it's, it's uh, just a flowering cherry, so it wouldn't be a protected species or anything like that. But when you look at it, it's actually um, low down. There's actually two main branches or two trunks coming out. And what it wants is the one nearest, you know, so if you cut one off, you still got another one yeah. there. So it really, rather than just keep trimming little bits and pieces back, it really wants that one trunk taking out and leaving, leaving the other one. So you take that one out this furthest in the corner, that would feel the problem. Yeah. I mean, flowering cherries don't send out spurs and shoots, you know, like willows and no. some other trees, so once it's cut down, that'll that get cut off, that'll do. Is it something Tim could do? Oh, I think Tim could do it, yeah. Okay, can you put that on his agenda? Yep, yeah. yeah, I'm going to ask you. Thank you. Right, John, good. Uh, right, reports from Individual councils and groups, you're receiving um, planning applications that the planning group have received so far. Um, is there any comment on any of those? Um, okay. Just the one. Yes. Uh, planning application 2201743. We expect proposed boundary wall at Orchard View, 7 Baptist Road. Yeah. 
Um, it's right over the top of the middle level drain and it obstructs view coming out of gateways. And I was quite surprised to see it been passed. It was only passed because they're moving the gate back. Are they moving the gate back? They've got, yeah, that's the new plans. The new plan is to move the gate back so that they're off the road when they when they turn so into it. Where at the moment they just sit there on blocking the highway when they want to go in because mm. the gate is, as you know, quite flush with the wall. So, so they have a time frame. Well, got to wait until the plan application is passed. If it's passed first, and then it's up to them. Right. Because there was a vehicle parked at the front this afternoon, and the great big part of the lorry tried to come in past through. Yeah, I mean, on the, so on the right hand side, they're lowering the boundary fence to wall over it to a metre. Mm. And then on the left hand side, they're giving it a, they're taking in a splay right. so that the gates can move back. But I mean, as it's, as it's a retrospective application and it's enforcement, once they've got the planning application, then they should, should in theory, do it. Otherwise, enforcement will just keep on to them. That mm. What they've got there is illegal or not. Not past planning, so they've got to do what the planning commission then is approved for. You can't understand how they've got approval to build over the top of it. We was told we weren't allowed to build over the top of it when we filled air draining. So I can't understand how middle levels let them do it. We're only consultants. Yes, I know. To discuss reports from councillors and the need for them for future meetings. All right, that's now leaving myself. Now, on the bottom of the agendas normally, we have um, Upwell matters, three holes matters, Lakes End matters. In essence, what they are becoming is any other business which we're not allowed to have. So, the proposal after this meeting going forwards is that. It are any Upwell matters, three holes matters, legs end matters, is that a proper um, report is written out by the councillor concerned and that it's submitted for the meeting as an, as an agenda item submitted to members. And that way we don't have this funny little Upwell three holes one, which is becoming, as I said, it was any other business and we kept slipping stuff in there, which was wrong. We're not allowed to do that. So um, that's the, the proposal going forwards. Oh, um, yes, Prue. Something came up on Saturday, long after the agenda was published, and I got a phone call when I got in this evening. Um, something I brought up under up on matters was it came in long after the agenda was published. Yes, it's and it's urgent, it can't wait for another month. Though. Right. So how can that situation be handled? Well, like anything else, I think if it's if it's a, a big item, then we'd have to have an extraordinary meeting about it. Well, it's not so major. Um, I'm going to bring it up under health and safety because that's about the only okay. place I can see. But I think we should have some, it should be possible, somewhere on the agenda um, to... The issue you've got, Prue, is that members of the public look at the agenda so they would come to a meeting because they're interested in something that's on the agenda. If you then bring something up that isn't on the agenda, and especially if they see it on camera, they'll say it wasn't on the agenda and yet it's been discussed and we didn't have an opportunity to come or say something before the meeting. And that's the issue. You can't have any other business. Well, that I understand, but... Um uh, how, do we, how do we deal practically with matters that need dealing with urgently? If it's, if, it's a, if it's a truly urgent, large matter, then we would have to call an extraordinary meeting. For well, it's it. not that large that we need to call an extraordinary meeting. If you say it fits under something else, like health and safety, for example, then it could be. It could be. Well, I will bring it up under health and safety. Now, and see what happens. The only other issue about putting things on the or discussing things that aren't on the agenda is that other councillors haven't got wind of it. So to sort of say, exactly oh, no, no thing, we've, yeah. we've had it before from you know, other councillors. Oh, I know it's not on the agenda, but no. well, if there's information that other councillors need to know about, and 
when we haven't, we haven't got it, it's hard to, you know, to make a decision if there's a decision that's needed or to discuss anything. Exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah, if, 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 some, if a parishioner phones in your contacts any one of us and they've got an, an issue which is deemed to be urgent, number one, we have to make a decision as to whether it is urgent, because um, no disrespect to anybody, but, but if you're phoning up about something or contact, it, it's urgent to you at that point in time. It isn't necessarily urgent. Um, if something was really mega urgent, we would have to have an extraordinary meeting. If not, then I would suggest um, it's forwarded on to Melanie and we'll, we'll make a decision on, as to where it would, might sit or whether it can wait till the next meeting. Any more thoughts on this? Well, we have got health and safety, so if it is something that's dangerous or something that needs dealing with, then it can come under the health and safety. It can do. In this instance. But certainly going forward, as Melanie was just explaining, as Andrew has added to, we can't have what effectively is any other business um, because it was wrong. We just sort of fell into it and it, it's got to discontinue after tonight's meeting. Well, they're not on the agenda tonight, so... No, because we've taken them off. But I mean, yeah, it's it's uh, uh, after. <laughs> I think Mike might have something he wants to bring up for for three holes. Is that right? Or uh, three holes for Lake's End? Mm -hmm. No, have I made that up? Right, I've made that up. I think right. you made that up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I made that up. In which case, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So going forwards, that is what has to happen. I'm afraid. How much notice do you need for the report? Five days, working days? The normal, yeah, if I could have a week, that would be better, but at least five days. Yeah, working days. Your working days. Yeah, working days. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay, um, next item is discuss a possibility, possible distribution of the welfare boxes in the tower room. Memory. So, this is what's in the welfare boxes. I've put it out on the table for you guys to see. There's nine of them upstairs. Um, my thoughts are there are plenty of people out there that probably need some of the stuff that's there, the blankets, the gloves, the hats and scarves and stuff. Um, they've been up in the tower room ever since I've been here, I'm now coming into my fourth year. Um, I just wondered if now would be a good time to just distribute them rather than actually have them just sitting up upstairs doing no good to anybody. I agree, I suggested this before, but um, that didn't come out. What about the luncheon club? I don't know. I don't don't know who to give them to, but it's... Jackie Scott involved with the luncheon club? Yes. I just think they're doing no good at all, sat up in that tower room. I couldn't agree with you all. I said so a couple of years ago. Um, shall I contact the luncheon club and see if they... You wouldn't mind contacting. It's Jackie, isn't it? Yeah, I'll contact Scott. Jackie. And if I take this with me... Yeah, I can put it back in the box and I can take that I, one. I, I, but there's sure. nine. There's mm -hmm. nine over there. As you can see what we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she would know without offending anybody. Right. Excuse me. I'll take my lead. Good evening, love. Thank you. Bye. 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 Is uh, to discuss just to, I can't speak, to discuss the purchase and use of solar panels from the village hall. Right. Okay, so um, we're all aware of the grant that was issued for the green improvement of the hall, and that we have spent a good part of that on renewing the electrics and updating etc. Uh, and we have the rest of it to spend so that we can claim the silver grant bank. So I was tasked with finding somebody to. Um, some, a project to spend out, um, and we've looked at solar panels. The reason we've looked at solar panels is electricity is going up, as everybody knows, um, and with the thought of in, incorporating solar panels into the building, we could become self sufficient during the summer months uh, and ease the pain in the winter months regarding the electric bill uh, that we currently have. So, I've been out to three or four different companies. Uh, and asked for them to come and fight. One has come back. No one else is bothered. 
Uh, spent many hours sat on my own waiting for people to turn up that didn't. Um, so due diligence done, we have one quote. The guy that has come back uh, is very knowledgeable and what is provided, and I will email it to you, I haven't done because there's rings of it, so if you want it, let me know. Um, but we have a quote, we have a calculation, we have a saving calculation uh, and a design. And the theory is 12 kilowatts of panels on a roof, 15 kilowatts of battery storage um, and an inverter. Um, he is also incorporating that a solar cylinder for hot water storage for 24,500. Um, it's not a million miles away from what we've got left to spend in the silk grant, so um, there won't be a huge hole in anybody's budgets. I propose at this time that we take the cylinder out of the quote, because to replace the cylinder, if anybody's aware of where the hot water cylinder is in this hole, half the kitchen's got to come out, um, and potentially the heat has got to be disconnected, and I don't want to do that on a project that's, well, the heat is so old, and on barrel pipe, if we start this, Dissembling it, we're not going to get it back together, and then we've got bigger problems. And the tank's got to be about 400 litres as well. Yeah, so if we take that <coughs> off, um, one of the issues that we've come across potentially is the structure of the roof, and would it take solar panels? Um, because of the Queen Perlins and no potential structure in the roof, um, looking at some of the drawings that have been prepared over the, that have been shared, um, we may have to build a frame that bolts to the roof to then create a frame that will take solar panels. This in itself will add additional cost to that 24 and a half grand, which is why it's taken a hot, hot water out at the moment. Um, what I kind of need really is a bit of agreement that it's something that we want to move along with. Um, I haven't brought the guy back. We've been discussing things via email regarding frames and, and installation, etc. But I don't want that he wants to come back and have another proper look and, and, and you know, give us a proper estimate. I can't foresee it going up a huge amount if we're going to take elements of it out. Um, but what I don't want to do is waste the guy's time because he's been nice enough to come along and spend his time initially giving us a quote. So if I can get a kind of almost uh, a yes at this stage, then we can move things forward, see where we are, get a definitive quote, and then make the final decision before we progress. I don't expect anybody to get up on the roof this weather, so I know it's not going to happen this, this year, but we need to get it in place so that we can get the silver arm claimed and back in the budget, hence the next conversation. Um, <coughs> so I propose that we go forward with getting this guy back, doing the proper quote, um, and then we can get a definitive price before we move forward. Do you think you'd need a contingency sum, and if so, how um, much? Uh, that I can answer at this moment in time. No. Because it's this extra framework that we need to look at, no, um, right, and without right. him getting up on the roof or into the roof space, we can't see. For as far as we know, as you say, you've got the Queen Perlins across, and there's just slats and insulation in the in the roof space. If that's the case, as it stands, if we fit solar panels to that, a one good strong wind, and they'll be in the car park, we'll be sweeping them up. So we need to look at getting a proper framework built first, and how much that's going to add to the additional or the initial quote. But um, this same guy would be able to quote for all that? Yes. I came up with a suggestion of a, a, a kind of U-struck frame, if you like, that hangs an overhead, overhooks, bolts to the Queen Perlins, and then off of that comes the other frame with the panels on. Uh, he seems to think that that'll work. He wants to come back and check it out before he goes any further. He doesn't want to waste anybody's time or money, uh, as we don't. So. What sort of panel size are you thinking for a 12 kilowatt volume? Um, he's about half the roof, he reckons. Um, Which is what? How many metres? One metres? I can get that to you, but I haven't got it with me. But, um, but yeah, he has, uh, he's saying that if you go 12 kilowatt panel, if we go 15 kilowatt battery, we wouldn't get, from, from a storage point of view, we wouldn't get any more batteries in the building no. unless we start racking them down the side of the hall. So we've cleared the space potentially under the stairs which would need to be um, insulated against fire, etc. But that seems to be the safest, most out of the way place for the storage batteries. You wouldn't get many more, if any, in there after the 15 kilowatts. So there wouldn't be much point going more with the panels because you'd be overcharging the batteries. And any excess, there is a buyback rate, but the buyback rate has dropped from 40 pence a kilowatt to five pence. It's terrible. Yeah, so there's no kickback as such. So if we can charge the batteries the best we can, then in theory, we should be in the summer months, definitely, we should be self-sufficient. But it also opens up, if we are 
the, the calculation is a rough estimate of a two and a half thousand pound a year saving on an electric bill. Um, so that will currently be a lot more going forward. Um, but what it enables us to do is, as a next year or a slash next project, is we've give, it gives us an alternative to look at electric heat as opposed to oil. Because at the minute we've got oil, or we can go air source heat pump, and we all know that the work that we've had done previously, the air source is not going to work in here because of the insulation, and that's another thing that's a pay investment. But we could go uh, infrared heating or solar heating or electric heating based off of solar panels. So in theory, the saving would pay for it and enable us to lose the, the costly fossil fuel <coughs> and also give us a bigger tick against the green going forward. Uh, I'm assuming these monocrystalline panels are 540 watts each. Yeah. Andrew, you wanted to say something? Yes, thank you. At last. <laughs> <laughs> I put my hand up and nobody else did. Yeah, um, I want to thank you all for his hard work and due diligence in getting quotes. As we all know, that, um, people say they want to quote and then nobody turns up. So I think you thank you for his time that. And yes, I'd like to support Rob and think that um, you should go forward with further investigation into the roof and everything like that and then just report back to council and keep us updated as and when. But I think you know, to, we need to spend this silver round so we can get it back. So it's no good digging dallying around different projects and things like that. And as Rob said, if it comes to slightly over what is left to spend, it's not going to make you know, the difference. It's going to make a big hole in anybody's budget and say it will benefit all. I second that. Right. Okay, can we all vote on that? Yes. Carried. Thank you very much, Rob. Go ahead. Receive an update from the parish surgeries held in October. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, as we are all very well aware, um, they were either not attended or very poorly attended. Um, the first ones that were done earlier in the year, in April, I think, were attended a little better than the October ones. So. Um, the question is, do we continue with these or do we stop doing these and report that we've stopped doing these and the reason why we've stopped doing these and wait until somebody wants to um, start them again? In all fairness, members of the public can come to this meeting if they've got any concerns and, and speak at the public forum. Makes sense. Um, so you know, rather than us also pay money to hire this hall, three holes, at Lakes End for these surgeries, which has been wasted, really. Um, it doesn't matter how much it is, it's just a waste of money. It's also a waste of our time. Um, and I don't think it's actually now achieving anything. Discuss. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, agree. Yeah. Okay, so with somebody, a proposal is to stop these surgeries. Yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> unanimous. No, <laughs> against. Against, you're against. Because I do think, see, we're going back, and that was one of the reasons that I resigned from the council last time, is that Lake said in Freehold's, we don't really do much for them. And although I, I, did, I was at one of the meetings at Freehold, and I did see nobody comes along. But they are part of the parish, and one of the beats of some of the parishioners is that the Upworld Parish Council was not representing them properly. By simply having a surgery, you're saying, well, we're here, we're doing our bit, it's up to you if you've got something to moan about. But I do take on board, being I'm on the finance committee, that we're wasting money while we're in yours. We do hold. Um, some of the meetings though at Lakes End and at Three Holes. Oh yeah, yeah, which is brilliant. Lakes End for which the last two years have had nobody there at all. Yeah, no, which is brilliant. Three Holes, normally we get some attendance, but Lakes End, we've had nothing for two years. Nobody but I'll say it's a question of trying to bear in mind what I've said though, is that you try to represent all the parish, not just Upwell. We, we, we do, and we've also got the, we have parish assemblies, don't we, when people can come to those as well. So, um, Andrew? Um, I was disappointed at three holes when I was myself and Colin attended, Colin attended as borough councillor. 
first of all, Sue Lowe stopped simply because she unlocked the hall and she stopped there. I was surprised to see Brian sitting at the other side of the table at the surgery, which was at three holes. And then two other ladies turned up and said, what was they there for? And we said, we've come to hear what you've got to say. So they got completely the wrong end of the stick. Mm. They asked about a footbed street boats down Squires Drove. Mm. And then the rest of the meeting, I thought we'd probably been, it started at seven, I thought we'd be done by about 20 past seven. We went on to about half past eight because the whole week then descended into utter chaos and just general chit chat about them. One of the ladies saying about how she you know, paid seventy five pounds when she lived in London to get rid of sure. some appliances and things like that. And I kept emphasising, have you got anything to discuss about the parish? And to be quite honest, I was just disappointed that, I mean, I could have quite easily stood up and said, right, you've got nothing to discuss about the parish, we're closing the meeting, but that would have been simply rude. But it was just idle chit chat for an hour and a half. Mm. Um, something not to um, deviate from where we are. On the Atwell Parish Council website, there is a, a larger amount of contactability for the councillors. It describes who they are, how to email them, how to phone them. We don't have that as such. We have a list of numbers, phone numbers. Rather than completely cut everybody off, as Brian suggested, instead of doing the parish surgeries, can we not get a page on the website that says who we are and we're open to chat if people want to discuss something? As parish councillors, we should be approachable. By anybody in the parish. Yeah, yeah. I'll mean, vote for that. I think that's a good idea. It's a normal way of you know, putting in... telephone numbers on there. Yeah, they can phone you. They can phone you. They can phone you. If you advertise it, you can sit on a hub or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Or you can just leave it on the parish council website if you want to. But um, if you've got an email address and a phone number, people might be, because some people might be reluctant to speak. They don't want to speak. <coughs> they don't know what to say. They don't know how to approach something. But if they can send you an email, it becomes abusive and we stop it. But email or at the end of a phone, some people feel more easy, more even able to talk. It's, it's not it's not to be proposed as um, you know, we're gonna get bombarded with a load of abuse. I'm just thinking that if we're going to stop this but we make it public that we are available to listen. What you um, could do, Rob, is make it so instead of going to the surgery, whatever council, two councillors on that if they're supposed to go to Lakes End, don't pick, go and rent the hall and whatnot, but just have them as the contact numbers for, yeah, for yeah. that date. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, then, we can and then that's to single well. everybody out. Yeah. Obviously, you're, you know you're on call for that day yeah. or, or whatever, or that, that period. Yeah. And then that's, you don't have to rent the hall, you don't have to go there. No, well, good idea. Yeah. But you're still you're holding your hand out saying we yeah. are here. Yeah, yeah. 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 brilliant. We could create a one-off Gmail account. For the parish council, it doesn't cost anything. Certainly, at problems at mm. rather than you getting bombarded with yeah. everything and then passing it around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think that would be better rather than giving out personal yeah, emails. Yeah, no, that's fair enough because I'm thinking of the, the potential yeah. for abuse. I mean, I have a councillor email, but everybody's not everyone's creating no, some no, councillor no. emails. If we had, um, if you had a, a generic one, sort of one thing, generic yeah. email address, yeah. if you need to speak about yeah. anything, start here. Yeah, and then that's a bad idea, Ross. I had somebody turn up on my doorstep about a month ago, about a problem. Then I had him turn up here at the playing field, but the problem again. Yeah, I mean, they do know where to contact some of us. I mean, I take, I take well, say for mine to view, I've taken probably about three phone calls in the last month from parishioners, and um, unfortunately, all three of them were things that were completely out of control mm. and remit, so we couldn't do anything about it. But they did phone. Um, is the point, but I do think that's a good idea to actually have a generic email address. Rather well, than just take something away, mm -hmm. we're putting something yeah, else in something. Place. We're doing it by another means, is yeah. what you're saying, yeah. yeah. Is, is everyone happy? Can we also, this is something that's come back to me earlier on today, well, yesterday. What about the people who don't do email? We can't please everybody. I know all you the can't, time. but this is what's going to happen. But the phone numbers are available. Yeah. 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 Trust me, Ros, when there's an issue, they find my telephone. <laughs> <laughs> they do mine. Or they come to my house. Mm. So they find me when they want yeah. me. I, I, I think that's, that's quite true. So, so yes. are, we, are we happy with Rob's proposal? <clears throat> Rob yeah. Chris's yeah. proposal, yeah. really? Yeah. Um, yes? Yeah. We're all yeah. happy yeah. with that? Okay, so if you wouldn't mind. Um, doing 
is this on your generic email address yeah, and okay. then obviously giving us all access to it because yeah, it's our work we're going to have to do that and then we can move forward with that it makes far more sense than us sitting in um, a hall spending money and um, chatting amongst ourselves okay um Number 10 is to discuss the casual vacancy and resignations releases. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, dates for 23 24. Melanie has emailed you meeting dates, proposed meeting dates for 2023. So the ones that I've put in red um, are the May ones. And the reason the May ones have to be at that particular time is because of the May elections. So therefore, they're not on the second Monday of the month. Of the elections. May the 15th. Is there the 13th? No, 15th. Got 15th. All right. <coughs> That might be the one I sent round the first time, was it? And then that was in the meeting papers. This was in the pack. It's in the end of the 15th. It wasn't the, because that is the 13th. Yeah, it's been changed to the 15th. Yeah, that's the 15th. Yeah, that's yeah. Tomorrow. I told you I had a really long day. I can't see it straight at the same time. Okay, right. So that's the only one that's changed. But if everybody's agreeable with the rest, then I'll get <coughs> Can I ask, yeah. well, I've got two or three holes, only one at Lake's End, bearing in mind what we've sort we of always, what Brian has we said. We always only do one at Lake's yeah, End. But bear in mind what <laughs> Brian has said, and you know, with my on the council, it does seem a bit unfair that we're only having, you know, anybody seeing this, why have we got one at Lake's End and two? So nobody comes two. either, Andrew. No. Nobody's been for two years. No. Well, I'm just wondering if it, you know, again, makes it look a bit, a bit more involved, but... It yeah. does, but you've also got my petrol to pay to get out there, which is more expense on the budget. But it's the size of the community as well. Yeah. More people in three holes and legs in. Because that's just a thought, bear in mind the fact that there's a space there. Mike, have you got a take on this? It's hard to get people in Lake Centre to engage, isn't it? We, we, I mean, we, we manage it with the village hall, to, or the Lake Centre hall, just about. Um, but it takes an awful lot of effort to get them involved. Um, I'm not sure they turn up, to be honest. I, I think three holes, they'll come to three holes if they've got a real issue. It's not that far. Just that I put it out there, just in case. I'm very happy to, to um, I mean, the hall's, you know, going through a major refurbishment, so it's um, it's coming up to scratch quite nicely, and it's, uh, it's a much nicer place to sit than it was a couple of years ago, so, um, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy, happy to, to just sort of put it. All right, so the move adopt these dates, yes? Yep. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Uh, right, now we get on to discuss the casual vacancy and resignations we have received. Um, you've all got, uh, as you know, um, Richard Melton um, stepped down from the council recently. Um, and. Uh, if we haven't already done so, please can we send our thanks to him? Yeah. Um, yeah. So we have done so yeah, for his service, etc. Um, but we have one uh, co option application form that came in um, from. Uh, you've all got a copy of it, yeah? From Zoe. Um, some of us know Zoe because she's already on the village hall, uh, up on the village hall committee. Um, and unless anyone's got any objections, I see no reason why she should not be co-opted onto the council. Hmm? No objection? No objection? No objection. Okay. Well, um, in which case, perhaps you should say... I hope I will good content. news. I will go <laughs> she's she will be very pleased. <laughs> yeah. Okay, lovely. Okay, Doug. Um, response to update the responsibility matrix. Now, following Richard's departure, there'll be a few holes. Mm -hmm. uh, do we 
I don't, we updated it, didn't we, last week? Yeah, so we've, we've picked up some of Bill's stuff anyway. Do you now want me to put it on to next month and see if we can get Zoe to fill in some of the I think so. I mean, blanks. There's, there's nothing that's, is there anything that's desperate for, for a person at the moment? I think planning could do with one more, couldn't they, just to make it an odd number? Yeah, we also had the moment, yeah. wouldn't it? Wouldn't, but it would be nice to have a, an no. odd number so that. Rather than an even number? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so, I mean, you know, we've just gone and been going a training session if there's something Zoe would be interested in the next meeting. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. We leave the responsibility matrix to next meeting. Yeah, yeah. 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 On to yeah. The next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, at this point, um, parishioners, thank you, um, and David, yeah. um, I have to stop filming.